Okay guys, so for this short video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to get the mods um, that I have for World of Warships. That's been a pretty popular topic the last few weeks, so um, I'll make one video and then pretty much be done with it. So I use Aslan's mod. Um, you can find that literally at aslan.com. And we just click here on the World of Warships mod pack. I have slow internet, so it takes a minute. And then it'll always show up here in pretty much this format, the first post. Um, if you have a way to do download torrents, you can do that, but I usually just click one of the direct downloads, essentially. So it'll download, and I mean, for you, it'll go faster, so I'll just go to once I have it down downloading. So once you have Aslan's downloaded and you launch it, um, you're going to get this screen. I mean, pretty obvious, select your language, um, click OK, and then it'll start loading up the uh, actual app for you. It'll always check for updates, which is nice, so it always keeps you up to date. And then you'll get a splash screen like this. Always click Show Preview Window. This just lets you see other modifications, how, what the modifications are going to look like. Um, keep in mind that the mods list is always updating. So after a patch, all the mods need to be updated to the latest patch. Oftentimes it's as simple as renaming a couple file folders, but sometimes there's bigger issues and that's why you're not going to see every single mod every single time. So as you can see, there's lists of what they're doing and what they're changing with the mod pack to allow it to get into the game without any bugs, right? So here's the minimap by Autospy being added a little ways after the, actually just an update to it, but here, added minimap by Autospy. This is the one I use, and you can see it was added on 3.11, which might have been the day of the patch for World of Warships, um, but it might have been a little bit later, actually. Actually, yeah, it was a little bit later. So um, keep that in mind, that you're not always going to see every single icon, or it's every single modification here that you normally would after an update. So then you click next and you select your um, games file folder, pretty simple. And now we get on to the actual mod list. So here is why you have your preview window up. Um, essentially, you can literally look through every single one of these and see exactly what it's gonna look like. All the little changes and everything. So. This is a great way to customize your own game. Um, you don't have to do it exactly the way I do it, but essentially what I've done is I've literally gone through every single one of these and checked what they look like and found the ones that work best for me. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, nice little preview window to have open. That's why I said to check it earlier. So the first mod that I have, at least in this iteration, um, I get screen panels mod side panels by Battle Beast V2. And that's what they look like in this little mod pack. In game, you can change it to uh, look like little ships here, which is nice. Um, I'll show that after we go through all these mods here. I get clan icons because um, it's just nice to see the little icons of the clan. And so I'll, I'm on the North America server, so I select that one. If you're on EU, select that. Russia, Asia, very simple. At the top, I do, oops, we don't want that. Uh, at the top, I do team HP bars because I have these um, side panels to keep track of the enemy ships, how many are alive and dead and all that stuff and what their healths are. So it's nice to just know a general estimate of the total HP left for each team, which is uh, somewhat handy to have in later game scenarios where you're trying to carry a game out so you know generally what you're dealing with, if it's even close or not. Um, so here is the Smart Horizon Crosshair. I went over this in my aiming video. Um, it unchecked, but essentially you just choose the colors you want. I like it with the, the white lettering, small size, and white lettering again. And then if you want to, though, you can try the Nomogram one. I tried this one. For some reason, it didn't... Um, it wasn't particularly accurate at long range. I don't know why. It just kind of, the scaling stopped working at a certain uh, shelf light time, I guess I should say. It just, I don't know, it felt weird. So that's why I stay, I stuck with the Smart Horizon because it just feels comfortable to me at this point. 
but you play with whatever's feel, feeling comfortable for you, honestly. Like, if you want, you know, any one of these down here, right? Like, all these different types, you know, you can do it. It's great. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty nice that they have all this customization. And, yeah. So I'll just, you can click some of these uh, bit larger folders, essentially what they are, and they'll get rid of them or add them all. Pretty handy. Can remove binocular frame. I don't actually do that. Or blur effects or team score. Like all these things are nice to have. Like you can have this. This is nice. You can see what the ship is. But I don't have that. Um, this is one I just got recently. It shows the max speed. Again, helps the uh, Smart Horizon Crosshair be a little bit better. You can just quickly know what the max speed is if you don't remember. Here is the zoom out mod I use. The Yazom or whatever. Zoom out mod. I found these Zeiss ones to be a little bit weird, so I just use 43% right now. It gives a good view of battleships. Um, it's a little bit too zoomed out, probably for destroyers. So if you're more of a destroyer player and you want to be a little more zoomed out, 25% is nice too. And you can try any one of these, like uh, like I said earlier. I also use here ship movement indicator. I'm not going to get into the how ethical it is to use some of these mods. I know a lot of people don't like this one and a couple other ones, but that's not what this video is about. So this is what I use. Ribbons V2. This is the one that makes the ribbons look like, I think World of Warships Legends, the console version, has these ribbons. And they just look better, honestly. I don't know why Wargaming hasn't updated the main game with it, but... Okay, uh, Minimap by Autospy. This thing has a ton of customization, which I will show you once we get into game. Um, but yeah, it does everything that the old Battleframe Minimap did, except the radar range, I believe, of any enemy ships. I think? I actually haven't looked into it too much, so we'll get into that. All ships in tech tree. This is great, because this should be in the game regardless, because... There's an armor viewer, so what if there's a ship that's been removed from the game that you want to see the armor on? Well, you have to have this mod in order to do that, because the base game won't show you all those ships, so it's a nice one to have. This one here allows me to filter through my camouflages and see which ones at a glance give me which bonuses. Very handy quality of life thing. Uh, this one, again, quality of life thing, just shows the ships afterwards, I believe. I believe that's the change. It just lets you see the ships um, afterwards. I really don't like this new UI they did. It's really, really bad. Um, banner switcher, campaigns, and port. Nice to have. Just little quality of life things. See, seeing how dead the game is, you know, just little quality of life things. <laughs> Karma info to flex on everyone, you know. <laughs> Session stats. This one's kind of a weird one, but it's nice to know your win rate at a glance from the day. The um, there used to be a per battle performance indicator that's not on here anymore. Okay, so this one works good now. Um, Carousel Extended. I use this one because you select a ship, so this guy has the Jutland selected, and it tells you literally everything that's equipped on your ship. So at a glance, you can just see, okay, is my ship ready? Okay, then you go into a game. Very, very nice quality of life thing to have. Um, dock Appearance. You can get custom docks here. I don't have any of those equipped right now. Sometimes I do. I like, um, oh, they don't have it. The There was an old April Fool's event with uh, toy boats, and sometimes I put that, uh, I put that as my <laughs> port, and it's really funny. Reminds me of that event, which was really fun. Now, I don't really do any of the uh, custom shell tracer things. I find the base game looks fine enough. But if you want to change it, you can. You can change the old graphics effects, that kind of thing. It's nice to have. You can move elements around. Like this, this there's a ton of customization here, which is really, really nice. So here's a, another one that people aren't too... There's some debate on whether this is good or not, but Navigator um, gives you the angle of the enemy ship and your ship relative to each other in a nice clear way. Essentially, I just use this to see if they're turning or not. I don't really use it as, and to make sure I'm angled enough. Um, I have it on the left side because I like it there, but you can have it centered or on the right side or in a different style. You can have it bigger or just a mini one next to your, next to your crosshair. But I like the left side. I don't know, just gotten used to it over there. 
Um, what else? What else? What else? I get clan icons again here on the loading screen. It's just, you know, giving you more information on your loading screen, which is nice. Little quality of life things. Remove unwanted text from map view. Essentially the tutorial stuff. I just get rid of it because I've played this game long enough. I know the keybinds. This one's really handy. It tells you how many secondaries are alive, what their range is, how much AA is alive, and what their ranges are too. Pretty handy one to have. Regen Assistant is uh, essentially a must-have mod for Battleship players, I think. It helps you maximize your heals. So it tells you exactly how much you're going to heal back and what the theoretical maximum is that you could heal. Very nice. Very, very nice mod to have. Good quality of life thing. Post-battle progress numbers. This just allows you to see what your combat missions are and what your progress is in the, on them in the final screen, uh, battle screen. So you don't have to go back into port and navigate through the slow UI to check that on that stuff. Very nice to have. Again, quality of life stuff. Detailed damage meter. I recently put this one in because I wanted to see exactly how much damage I was taking from weird, obscure angles, and I wanted to know which ships were doing it. Um, I don't usually have this one. I find it clutters things up too much, but you can have it if you want to. Score timer. This one must have if you're looking to carry out games. It literally tells you who will win on points by the end of the game. So if your team has more caps, right, obviously you're going to win on points. So it highlights whichever one's on the lead. The really, really big thing that this one does is it allows you when the timer is ticking out, right, if there's a minute left on the game and you don't know who's going to pass who, it'll highlight whoever will whoever's points will be ahead at the end of the game. Very, very good mod to have if you're trying to carry out games and deciding what you should do. Because if your team's going to be ahead on points, you don't need to push. But if you know the enemy team is going to pass you on points um, or will stay ahead on points by the end of the game when the timer ticks down to zero, well, you need to do something to try and win the game. So again, all this information just helps you play the game um, more efficiently or, well, it make, it gives you information to make decisions off of, essentially. It just provides information. Shot timer, this tells you how long it's been since you shot, so gives you a nice timer for when your concealment will reset. Uh, radar timer, this one isn't usually always correct, but it can give you a nice little indicator on when radars will be running out. Clock in battle, nice to just see what time it is, you know, so you don't play too long. Uh, improved chat, I love this one. It tells me exactly what ship it is, and then the player's name and what they said. It's it's excellent, excellent. Um, I don't know if that's in the base game yet. I actually have just been always using this for, been using it for so long, I don't really use the base game one. Now, I don't use any of this stuff here. I have a ship skins mod though. Um, you can change the look of all your ships here. Uh, this would take a long time to go through and check each one to see what it looks like in game, but you could totally do it. Um, but I found this one to be really good. This just gives you the nice blue camos for the American ships. Uh, Measure 22, I think it's called. Um, but essentially this is what the American premium camos used to look like and Apparently they took them out because potato computers couldn't handle them or they it actually functioned as actual camouflage So it's just nice for me to see. I like the look of it better um, And that's essentially what this mods these mods all are. It's just make things look nicer um, this minimal waves actually can help you shoot at water lines because Waves aren't in the way so you can more accurately hit water line at close range um can get fog and glare remover, which is just takes that stuff all away completely. There's a slider for that in game, at least the fog remover, so you don't really need that. Um, I find the game looks kind of bad without fog. It's almost like they this game needs the fog to obscure what's actually there in order to look okay. Um, replays, uh, it's nice to have foldered and removing the max limit because I often. Uh, if I had a good game and I forgot to record it, I'll go back and record it using the replay system. So it's nice to have there. FPS limiter is a nice thing to do if you don't want to use VSync um, to limit your frame rate. I'm using 60 right now because just because of a situation where my actual monitor broke. But normally I would unlock this up to pretty high because my monitor that broke 
has I think 144 refresh rate. So it's nice to have that a little bit higher. So there's the mods in Aslan's mod. Um, let's just hop into the game and I'll explain a couple, um, how to enable a couple things. Um, but yeah, you'll just push next, remove all, create desktop shortcut next, and then you click install. Easy as that. All right, let's hop into the game. Okay, now that we're in game, you can see a lot of these mods have already applied themselves, right? Well, they all applied themselves, essentially. This just allows you to, you know, get more information on your ship. It's very nice to just be able to see what's all there. And you can, in fact, change things from this spot. Very cool. All these quality of life uh, changes are quite nice. Um, I really like that World of Warships allows this kind of modification to the game because I think it adds a lot. Um, it adds a lot to the game. So we'll hop into a training room to show the map real quick. It's uh, It's got almost too much modifications actually to it, this auto spy one, but the main thing you're going to be looking for is to make the map bigger and to um, enable the little aiming dot reticle thing. I've, I've heard some people have some issues with that. So you can see I've always already done this. I've created a decent scale for myself that allows me to just use control plus or minus to make the minimap bigger or smaller. So how you do that is you go into this settings cog here on the side and then you click additional settings right there and then here you get zoom steps so you click that cog there and that allows you to um, adjust here by going plus and minus all the zoom steps of the minimap which is super sweet this is literally what I was doing in the config file of the uh, uh, battle frame minimap in my aiming video and this is just in game which is sweet like it, it's amazing that it's in there um, so once you've calibrated that to what you want here is how you change your site marker here. You can change it, it can be a circle, or you can change it back to an X or anything you want to. Pretty cool there. And now I say that this has too much customization, you know, the normal water transparency. You can do land transparency even too. I haven't even checked that out. But you can enable the main battery firing range of enemy ships and friendly ships or torpedo range or all these things. You get tons of lines on the minimap, which is honestly a little bit much, but you know, you can customize all of this however you want to. So do you want your um, main battery firing range to be a line or filled? You know, you can, you can change all this stuff. There's just so much to change here, like ship markers, all this stuff. So if you really want to, you can go in and customize all this. I've pretty much left this default. I really just changed the uh, the map size like this and kind of said, oh, that's probably good enough for me because this little X, nice and accurate, right? Now, one, one last thing. I want to talk again about this uh, Smart Horizon Crosshair. How to enable it, you go into settings and you go into controls and then you go into select crosshair and normally it'll be on dynamic with type 2 or type 1 selected right you'll have something that looks like that so if you go into settings you have to select dynamic and then you get the settings here so normally you'll be on type 1 I find this one doesn't this one just doesn't really do much for me because sure it says dynamic but you don't see it actually changing the distance markers as you change your aim point so the nice thing about the Smart Horizon one is it, it essentially does that exactly, the dynamic thing here. You can see them changing where all the little markers are. And like I said in that video, you essentially aim at the seconds mark. So here, you know, we get essentially a 13 second travel time. If it's a 30 knot ship, you'd put the ship right here at 13 seconds and you'd shoot and that's where the shells would land, assuming they'd, uh, the enemy ship doesn't move. Pretty handy mod to have. Um, just to go over some other uh, things that I have as just normal game settings here. I do have um, terrain hint indicator when locked on a target, so that you know I'm when I'm just sailing around normally. I don't have the constant beeping, but if I'm actually looking at someone and focused on something else, I get that little audio audio reminder to not run into an island. Um, I hate I hate when 
the game tries to control my ship for me, so I just leave it off. I just want the sound to let me decide if I want to do a grounding or not. And then I take full adaptive uh, interface. It just lets you see all the health pool or the health bars and everything of enemy ships. Here, display team lineups. That's how you get the uh, lineups on the side to to appear. I want loading times of everything. I want smoke screen boundaries. I want uh, smoke screen timer, which is in the game now, which is why I didn't have a mod for that, by the way. Um, counter for damage upon spotting, potential damage, show time and port, battle chat, all that stuff. Um, essentially, all I want is more information. You'll, you'll notice that there's a few quality of life things, but most of the in-game stuff is just giving me information to make decisions off of. So. That's um, pretty much all the things that I have. You can see I've got my little uh, secondary mod here. My healing mod will normally show up here, but since this ship doesn't have a heal, I don't get that. You know, we got the team HP bars at the top, the score timer, all that stuff. And one last thing to get the ships to look like this, right? This is a ship here instead of a bar. So you click this little settings thing here. Uh, it probably starts in Russian, so there's a little English tab, so you can see the show panels and show all this information if you want to, and it'll be on stripes to start with, and maybe even colored, uh, sorry, white. So I switched to colored and silhouettes, and that kind of gives me a nice little picture up there. So that is how I like to set my game up. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and I hope you have a good day.